this is a exercise in wet in wet i'm wetting the entire paper the light blue color is just so that i know which portion is wet and which portion is not really but i'm wetting the whole thing with a light blue thin this is kind of thick yellow you can say it's a creamy consistency whatever i'm putting down on the paper whatever the shape is blending itself on the periphery and creating a blur shape similar to what it was earlier red and green now this is blue and green more bluish and greenish and since the paper is going to remain wet for another 4 5 minutes at least i'm not worried uh because i i don't want any sharp edge anywhere this is just an observation that i'm more interested in what happens with different consistencies of the paint but of course i have a little plan in mind what i want to paint some kind of trees and a little mountain behind and the water body in the foreground but the plan is very vague i'm more interested in observing what happens on the paper and then converting that uh, whatever has happened only thing i'm concerned is i'm using thin paint as well as thick paint so that different effects are created Now as I move in the water side I'm just adding little thin blue uh, to the whole thing and this looks like a water body now let's see what to Yeah this horizontal line defines a ground the paper is in wet for a longer time than i thought and uh, i'm happy about it i can use it still be very blur about everything the wet in wet effect uh, you can never predict actually what is going to happen because there are so many parameters like how absorbent your paper is this is not a very absorbent paper which i'm using uh, that that's why it is wet for a longer time then the humidity of that particular day in the area where you are working all these factors will decide how the effect is actually going to be so the entire fun is going solving the mystery observing the mystery and trying to utilize whatever has happened on the paper to best of our advantage so this is like we are actually interacting with the medium the paint is settling itself painting creating some kind of shape and my objective is just to give that shape a little definition Now this is the rigor which can give thin lines. Now I don't want too many sharp uh, bold patches that's why i'm blending whatever i'm painting with water into a blur edge a 
little trees on the top. I had wetted the entire paper which has dried but the water side fortunately is still a little wet if you see which was painted later on Now the paper is almost dry and I have little effect in my mind. Let's see. Now, uh, I'm adding just little plain water on top of whatever has happened there and blotting it with a tissue. Yeah, here it is. You can see the paint has really been lifted. Now this is the advantage where the paper is not as absorbent. You can actually lift the paint and since the edges are not sharp it can look like highlights on the water surface. This is the only way you can go reverse in watercolor like it is always light to dark but these are the only times when you can go dark to light. These are the just last touches of pulling it together, blending it together. At stages like this, I always get confused where to stop. <laughs> 